What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel, Are We NPC? My name is Thomas and today we are checking out a roguelike called Mortal Sin. If you're not familiar, this game was released into early access on March 15th, 2023 by solo developer Nikola Todorovic. Mortal Sin is changing the landscape for first person roguelikes. This fast paced, incredibly fun and smooth melee combat is best in class. Let's jump in and take a look at why this is the case. With Mortal Sin being a roguelike, you have your option of character or class before starting each run. Currently, there are a total of 15 unique character classes, each with their own skills and abilities. My favorite's the Duelist, so we are going to jump in using that. In a fit of rage, you twist the threads of fate. The will burns bright, but no flame can burn forever. The time has come now for your flame to be extinguished. Here we are everybody at the base camp. It starts pretty bare bones, but you can unlock things as you proceed through the game. This is Helena. I can turn in a passive skill upgrade from my last run that I didn't get to turn in because I died. And it looks like we can enhance critical strikes by 400 damage. Over here is crafting. We can choose one of three. Up there is a passive skill I can purchase for the run. Helena is your main source of progression through the game. As you can see here, I'll bring up the tab. Mortal Sin has three different areas that you can complete in any order. This will unlock different combos, abilities, weapon types, and associated quest reward turn-ins that can enhance your run. Once you complete one of the three levels, that will be closed off to you for the rest of your run, and you will be forced to choose a different location. The Trial of Resolve is also optional after every successful level. This will unlock new combos for the player if successful, but it is a real test of your build. Additionally, every sub-level usually has a quest that you can complete to then turn into Helena for an extra reward that will help your run. Pressing Tab will open up your Equipment, Stat, and Skill menu. You can see my critical 400% right there that I just picked up. This way you can track how your build's doing. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Shuffle Combo. This will be set to Off by default, and you will want to turn this on, as you will be playing at a severe disadvantage if you don't. This will allow the player to mash combos together that come up on screen for different perks like invulnerability, permanent stat boosts at combo 6, whole bunch. And as you can see, there is a ton of different combos in the game. Not only will this prompt you to actually play the game correctly, but it will also enhance your runs. I will admit, things can get pretty hectic, especially with aiming your melee weapons, so placement of your combo screen there is totally up to you. Another quality of life update that they've added is turning on and off the tutorials. Again, this is an early access, so we keep seeing this game evolve. It's really nice to be able to declutter this base area and uh, have a little bit more immersion here. Nikola is a solo dev. He's built this thing all by himself, and with the aesthetics of the game, uh, how smooth the combat is, it's really impressive the amount of updates we're getting in such a short amount of time. Being a solo developed game, you'd think that there'd be some rough edges, but as far as I can tell, it's pretty dang polished. I'm really liking what we got here, and we're just going to begin this run. We're going to start in the dungeon, which is the normal starting route that you would take. After a few hours of play, you'll see these walls pretty often. Everything's procedurally generated, which is nice. Oop, pulled off a combo there, got a free whirlwind attack. So we'll take out these vases. Big threat. Armor, there we go. Okay, some good starting armor. We got some survivability now. And as you play the game, you're just killing monsters, causing some blood spatter, and having a ton of fun. Got a new set of katanas, level 6. There we go. And sell those boots. Equipment stats are pretty clear. You can see what level disparity there are between what you're picking up uh, and what you have equipped, which is nice because this is fast paced. Sometimes you'll be whoop, picking up gear um, in the midst of some really dire scenarios. So having those clear stat numbers is really nice. But let's talk about the aesthetic here. This game looks crazy, has that negative effect. Um, and color plays a really big focus 
on how fluid everything feels. You know where to go. You know what's attacking you. Let's see if we can get these parries off. There we go. Just farm this guy. One more. There we go. Now I can turn this upgrade into Helena if I survive and upgrade a weapon fully. So I can start to pick up equipment that has really good perks and take it to max. Here we go, an ultra rare. Very nice. Sadly didn't have a perk on it though, so I'm not getting any extra abilities out of it. It's better boots. You want to press every floor plate to open up the next section of the map. Let's swap that out, sure. Sell that. 21,000 gold, pretty good surplus here. And here is our perk selection. Parries, combo mastery, temporal rift, slow down enemies. I'm gonna go with the combo mastery. We're gonna try to keep those up, um, even though I can get kind of distracted sometimes. What's that guy doing? Go for the behead. Man, this game just looks incredible. There's traps everywhere set up. Uh, everything is procedurally generated, so proceed with caution. You're never sure if there's something around the corner that's going to take a bit of your health bar. Those things are my least favorite. Do some big damage. Can grab you real fast. Be on the lookout. I say we just sell this thing. A lot of the game is making quick decision making. Got some cleavers here. Ultra rare. Sell that. And we proceed. Keep upgrading our armor. On the right, you can see the durability of my armor. That's what the blue flasks are there for. It can be really easy to lose your armor during a big swarm of enemies. You're paying attention to your health bar instead of that, and boom, your equipment's gone. That's what's great about this game is you don't want to gain too much fondness for any single item, as it could disappear if you get a little lackadaisical, aren't monitoring those, uh, those bars. Scares. Big part of the game. There are more than just the hands and the faces that spit out those projectiles. There's a bunch of uh, jump scares in the game. Things that will pull you in, crowd control you, and cause you some fear. That's for sure. We got a lot of enemies spawning now. We have to take out 15 of these guys. Make sure we're moving. Not quite chaining these combos together, but that's okay. I'm just relying on my weapons. Got a whirlwind. Oh yeah. No damage so far. Feeling good. Couldn't get that guy in the trap, but that's fine. Alright. Clear this place out. Capped on health. Do a little revive of the armor. And um efficiently pick up these orbs. Let's see. Not getting away from me. Most first-person roguelikes that I've played rely heavily on gunplay. Uh, think of Gunhead or uh, RoboQuest. Um, you know, those games are incredibly good at what they do, and Mortal Sin is good at melee combat. Feels really nice as you can see i haven't gotten to a huge mob yet but there's that hit stop that allows you to take a little bit more time and chain combos together although the game's fast paced it allows you some breathing room there we won't go down the stairs yet let's see what's in here another scare if you get ooh, i forgot they throw projectiles now because of that curse Gonna heal up here because there's a bunch of essence. Let's go. Checking my corners. And it's time to get out of here. Alright. 
So we got for perks, combo mastery, vitality, and overpower. Uh, I think combo mastery is the way to go. Ooh, close one. Clear the way here. Nice. These portals here will randomly generate in levels. Nice, another ultra rare, the rapier. Ooh, yeah. Good reach. That portal behind us, we'll go check out here in a second. They can be kind of deadly, so we'll see. Yeah, didn't get much this run, so mine as well. Take a chance. It's mostly like platforming. I've died a lot here. And look at this. We got an easy one. Just a bunch of barrels. Very nice. We'll do a whirlwind here. Make this a little faster. Yeah. That's what we want to see. And nice. I thought I was in for a little bit of a harder one here. I've been avoiding these on most of my runs because... I've just, you know, ended a really good run, getting a little too greedy. And let's keep the momentum going. All right, so we have a curse here. This will increase our item level drop, but add a severe curse to what's going on here. Anytime I kill an enemy, it freezes the ground. We are going to pass that up because plus one level is just not enough. We have a boss room here, playing it safe. Let's get some combos going. Dang. Sometimes those parry block timings can be a little confusing. Aiming for the head. He's gone. And we got a few more guys here. Easy. Very nice. Hmm. There we go. Big decision. Big decision. And we're through the dungeon. Every time you clear a level successfully, you get a horde of new loot, which is great. Got some gauntlets there. Eh. I think I want to keep my attack. Take that for the perk. More gold, better armor, thorns. Regular enemies take damage when they hit you. And some normal gauntlets. And here we are, back at the starting location. I completed a quest, so I'm going to go over to Helena. We're going to see upgrade weapon, like I said. Um, I want to go with the Berserking Katanas, see if we can keep that perk on there as we upgrade, and we did, but it's level 32, so that's fine, something we'll main the rest of the game, I have a good amount of cash, might as well keep that going. And we're pretty full on flasks, so let's see. Ooh. That iron grip is nice. Durability is something I don't want to have to manage as much. And then just worse. Okay, this is kind of a bad roll here. I can't sell anything, I have to swap. Or maybe I can just waste that money. Trapper's good, but it consumes durability kind of antithetical to what I'm trying to do here, so I think we're just going to walk away. Yeah. We're going to go to the forest. I haven't completed this yet on phase two. It's the most challenging area of the three. You unlock it a little bit later into your progression, and here we are with a quest. Five parries. Let's see if it's one. Once they lose their head, they're a bit less likely to actually attack you. They kind of go off and do their own thing. So I'm going to farm these parries elsewhere. 
One thing you guys should know is you actually can change the color scheme in the settings. It's another unlock that's part of your progression. As you level up, you can start to mess with how the game looks a bit, and it's really satisfying. This might be a good moment to get my parries in. That bull rush there is, you can't interrupt it. You have to block. It'll tell you what side of the screen it's coming from, but it's good to take those seriously. Took down the crowd here. Will he, yeah, see, he has no idea where he's going. Let's heal my equipment, pick those up. Here we go. Damn. Come on, there we go, parry. Another parry. Come on, guys. Ooh. One more. There we go. Turn that into Helena for innate item skill. Sell. Sell that. We keep marching. Got a good feeling about this run, guys. Switch that out. Good boost. And level clear. Let's head to the gate. This is uh, definitely a horror game. You can tell by the symbolism, everything going on here. Um, the atmosphere is dark. And it's hard to achieve that in um, such an arcadey feel. I, I love how they've approached the aesthetics here. Oh man, we got a brute. These guys will break down after you kill them into tiny little monsters of the normal form here that can be kind of hard to see. Uh, it was uh, kind of funny. First time I took one of these guys down. Oh, well, forget what I said. This guy didn't do it this time. I think it might be the yellow ones instead of the red. Not getting much here. We have some good, good gear. There's another portal. Take these guys out. Unlock this region again. There we go. I don't know, after getting lucky with the barrel room, I'm thinking the forest is gonna mess with me a little bit and give me something a little bit more challenging. So I think we're gonna ignore that, dodge the saw. The dismemberment in this game is pretty satisfying. It's nice to see enemies react differently to what they're missing. Yeah, there's the portal. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna ignore that for now. We have a good run going. And here's another perk. Explosion after 20, Mastery, and Lightfoot. I love this one. You can dash while kicking, making those combos even easier to chain. When you're a character using a bigger weapon that has a longer swing time, uh, you can kind of stumble. Chest here hidden. Oh, another scare. I keep forgetting that they throw projectiles. That's annoying. I really want to get rid of that curse. Most scares will drop a chest if you avoid it, taking any damage. Even more. Oof. There's the yellow guy. This is the version of the elite that will break down into tinier little versions of itself. Yeah, there we go. Really unsettling. Nice. All those elites will drop perks. Take care of that guy. Which is really nice because perks are probably the most rare thing to pick up. You only get one every few levels, and so being able to destroy an elite is uh, 
good way to boost your build. So that helmet, no good. There we go, we needed that armor durability boost. Oof. These traps, man. Alright, we can start to head out of here. The waypoints on the ground are really nice. Here's another curse. Increased durability damage. Increased guard damage, but plus two on the item drop. And durability loss. Okay. We'll take it. Here's another boss room. We got 22 enemies to take out. They're dropping like flies. Ooh. Get a combo off. Oh no, I'm running into traps. There we go. Nice berry. It's projectiles. Killing me. Oh no. Quick heal off. Oh, we lost all our armor there. I wasn't paying attention. It's that easy, folks. That is the name of the game, Mortal Sin. I have definitely committed one by letting my armor break. So we gotta continue our equipment grind. To hope we can survive this one. Go sidestep that. Another pressure plate. Watch that trap. Nice. Worst feeling to be slowed down. Oh man. Aim for the head here. Let's get this guy. Yeah. Get another perk. Light foot. Ooh, we got a curse. Oh. No, it can be that fast. Oh, I thought I was getting through it. I thought I had this one. But that is Mortal Sin, everybody. Such an intense game. So satisfying. So fun. Check it out for yourself. It is on Steam. Remember, this is a solo developed early access title, and it's quite impressive. We've been getting updates after updates, and I can't recommend this enough. If you want to see more Mortal Sin combat gameplay, I'll be taking this game to the end, defeating the Maw himself, and I'll have more to say about the game once I've, I've completed it. So stay tuned, let me know if you like this content, if you want to see more of the game, and let me know how you're liking it if you've been playing. So thank you so much, I'll catch you in the next one.